you know, I think that one of the things that really served me well is I would continue asking why. Why is this guy growing and I can't? Because I'm blaming the economy. Why is that? Why am I killing myself? I'm traveling like, you know, like massive, like, you know, miles every single week. And yet this guy's doing less than half of that. And he seems to be growing. Like, well, what's going on there? Why am I starting a business and, and six months into it, I'm barely scraping by. When And, and as I started looking at that, that was the big identifier when I realized I'm trying to do it all from up here. And there's a purpose to our logical mind to help us solve complex problems. But we start using it to try to strategize and run our entire life when there is so much more powerful, like so much more power available to us when we can get into alignment, use our mind the right way, but then be open to that flow of things opening up. That was the biggest shift I made from doing certain things to doing things a certain way. Welcome to 7 to 8, our special series on 7 to 8 figure entrepreneurs. In this special series, I interview million dollars, some $10 million, and even some million dollar business owners who uncover their twists and turns in their entrepreneurial adventure in order to help you to avoid the potholes and stick to the fast track. Welcome now to Center Stage, our next special guest. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I am super glad to have you here with us today because I'm here with my most amazing guest, Joey. Joey, thank you so much for being here with us today. Great to be here with you, Michelle. I'm looking forward to a great conversation. Awesome. So give us a highlight of who you are and a quick introduction to your business. Absolutely. So my name is, is Joey Joseph Drolshagen. I, um, I come from a 28-year corporate career building massive territories. And I did it the really hard way for a long time <laughs> into building corporations and then helping organizations, multiple organizations in bankruptcy, get back into profitability. So wow. today I get to, I, I build my own businesses and I've grown probably five or six businesses now. And I'm in the process. I just took out two more and, and then I help other people to quickly scale their business. And what I love about what I do, Michelle, is I help them maintain a healthy balance in their life while they do so. Oh, excellent. But you're not allowed to answer my questions before I ask you. <laughs> I was going to ask you, well, what's your favorite part of your job? But that's awesome. All good. We'll have to hit rewind. <laughs> there you go. So uh, tell me a bit about the bankruptcy to building business. That is a unique place to come from because that sounds really hard. How did you get into it's, that? Yeah, it's, it's not fun. I started right. out with one organization and I was leading the sales. I was vice president of sales and they went into bankruptcy. So I was part of that team to bring them back through it. It, it has really served me well in helping mm -hmm. me to help other businesses, my own businesses to scale those and such. But man, is that a hard way to live life? Oh man, right. it's a hard way. No kidding. Cause I can only but imagine what somebody might emotionally be going through. Like, sales is hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> but those of us who have ever done sales, it's hard enough, let alone everything knowing, is sales, though. right? And and knowing that kind of that whole process is happening and try to still wake up every day and go, yeah, we can do this, raw, raw, shish, boom, ba. And <laughs> like, wow, those people yes. have some tenacity. And it was a very tough life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no yeah. kidding. So skipping by your favorite part of your business who do you love to serve and support now who's who's and who comes to you the most often and who do you love to work with yeah I, I love working with it so so where my where my wheelhouse is is is, is small business owners and when I say small business owners it can be millions of dollars a year but it's not the larger corporation structures to it right and so working with those business owners working with their teams helping them like I said to quickly scale that's that's where like my wheelhouse is you know what the other area where I focus is helping realtors to, oh. to scale to grow their business regardless of the economy and and again you know that balance that I spoke of to to employ that I mean that's you know business and, and I'll, for myself as a business if I can go on and then you tell me if I went too far but <laughs> <laughs> I'll just but, tease you, you know, a little. It's all good. For my, I know for myself, <laughs> you know, I've worked 60, 70, 80 hours of work trying to, you know, a week trying to build a business and putting my all into it and setting my family aside and doing all the things that we're taught to do that massive actions. And if you want to be successful, you got to put everything aside. I, I've lived like that and I didn't get near the results that I get today and that my clients get today in the tools that I utilize and teach. Nice. So let's dive into that because yeah. my gross assumption is people in real estate, once you learn how to be a good real estate 
agent learn how to invest in real estate, but I could be totally wrong. So how do you work with them? <laughs> that is a great, that is a progression, isn't it? But so many realtors and, and, you know, so one of the things I'd like to point out here is, is and business is the same way with the economy and things like that. Just real estate is, is such a great way to, to say this is there's realtors that just skyrocket in a down economy. And then there's realtors who struggle during a booming economy. And when I started seeing that with my business and how I was building it versus how somebody else was, and we always want to blame the economy, we want to blame politics, whatever it is and stuff, but I'm watching- Oh, come people. on. I really want to blame politicians, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> there you carry on. Yes, you can, just not during this conversation. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> but no, but seriously, that was good. That was really well placed. <laughs> um, but when we look at that, is is I start looking at why am I- you know, why is the economy impacting my business and I can't grow it? Yet, yet Bill over there is like just ramping up like crazy. Like, what's going on? And I started realizing some things, some really basic things. Is it's our thinking, our mindset. Everything begins with mindset. Now, for sales, I always say, you know, somebody has to sell something for something else to happen. But but all of that goes back to mindset, you know. And so we are so often conditioned and 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 trying to, you know, do certain things. You know, as a business owner, we do certain things. We do webinars. We get you know consulting, and they say do these things. And you and and what I've come to realize, it's not about doing certain things. It's about doing things a certain way. So when we get into alignment with that, one of the things I've you know kind of become known for is helping people develop systems of accelerating habits. And Michelle, your accelerating habits will never work for me or the next guy or one of your listeners, but they work for you, just like mine work for me. So when I decided, I, I really, since I was 22 years old, I've wanted to inspire, motivate, and lead people to live in better lives. I, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to do it in my own life back then. But as I progress through this, I thought it can't be about my walk and the A, Bs and Cs that I took. That's not going to work for anybody else because I tried that for decades following somebody else's. I had to develop my own. As business owners, when we start developing our own systems of accelerating habits, that's when we hit that launch pad and things start taking off by doing things a certain way. Does that make sense? Absolutely, it does. So- Talk to me about these the habits because um, you're, you're preaching to the choir and I think it's really funny, especially in things like, oh, start a podcast, you'll make a ton of money. I'm like, that has got to be the biggest money suck I've ever gone into, but it is so much fun. I'm not quitting. I don't care what anybody says. Um, and I Good think as you. entrepreneurs, we get we we do that. We get stuck in our own thing because you know it's our baby. That's the way we made it and and all that kind of fun stuff. So how do we figure out what the hour um, successful system is as business owners, as, as realtors, you know, cause I, I consider a realtor, a business owner, they're building the of business, course. you know? So, so as <laughs> business owners, what we have to do is, is, is we get outside information, yeah. but instead of expecting one of those to take us to that launching place, to give us the revenue, to give us the freedom of life, to give us that, we have to understand that they're pieces of information that we gather, but we have to decide within us. You know, I work with, Excuse me. I work with, and again, I'm using realtors because it's such an easy example, but yeah. business owners are the same way. I work with realtors. You ever see somebody do a Facebook live and you can tell they cannot stand doing it? Yes. <laughs> How attracted are you to that things. person? How attracted are you to that person? No, not, not at all. You flip to the next one, don't you? No. But yes, so another realtor can be like, I'm fire to get in front of a camera like that and go at it. And those people you start getting attracted to, don't you? Yeah. Somebody may be cold calls. You know, we always talk about the 10,000 pound phone and stuff like that. I happen to enjoy doing cold calls, but it's because I've, I've, I've worked it out to be like a game when I do it. But, but it's finding those avenues instead of, you know, trying to build a successful business based on what other people are telling you is required. It's figuring it out for yourself. It's really an inside job. And that's why I, part of the reason I love what I do, because everything I do, I can grow a business from $20,000 a month up to $250,000 a month rather quickly. But what, where I really, really get excited and what I love about what I do is the transformation that that individual uh, you awesome. know, achieves as a result of that. 
I love it. So we will get into their changes and how you help them transition through this, but let's back up the bus a little bit. What were some of the things that you had to go through in order for you to make your first million? Well, we're going to need to add a couple hours here. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll just say, Michelle, I ran into a lot of walls. You know, I, I, I spent like when I first stepped into like a vice president of sales position, you know, I would travel three to 4,000 miles a week and I would just go, go, go and, and did that continuously. I had a young son at home who like out of five pregnancies, he's the only living child I have out of that, you know? So, I mean, he, when I wow. say I adore him, I meant it. But when he, I missed his first birthday, because I was down in Indiana building a sales territory, thinking I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. It's not what I wanted to do, but I was following that avenue and things like that. I've missed so many really big things in my life in the name of trying to build business. I would get in that mode where I would just be nonstop. And, and one, of the, one of the key things I learned in that process, which took a long time, was the longer I live up here in my logical mind, the less my results were. Huh. You know, that I literally, you know, could call my logical mind the Antichrist because it pulls me out. And, and one Ouch. of the reasons is, I well, the reason being is we strategize, which we come up with our goals, which then is exhaustive to-do lists. And we come up with all the things we're going to do, do, do. And we, and, and we follow those. And it's such small results when we can get into a mindset, when we can get our mindset into alignment between the conscious subconscious, when we, we can get that into alignment, all of a sudden things, we get into that. Have you experienced where you're just in this flow and things start showing up with ease and they start happening? I call them the out of the God moments of, you know, or out of the, out of the uh, blue moments in life where things just start showing up. We happen to overhear something that's a critical answer to something we're kind of asking in our head. That's when we get into that. And when somebody gets into that mode, we're living life differently. Mm -hmm. And what I like to say is we're living from the inside out. Nice. So what are some of the things that you had to do to, to one, figure that out? Or did yes. it just come to you in one of those moments of, hey, no, it was not, a lot not, of study. So, this isn't working. <laughs> might want yeah, to I've think, been studying think. these works. Like I said, 22 years old is where I, I identified that passion. And I've been a, a student of it ever since. And I'm a little bit older than that now. <laughs> and and so through that process, I just, you know, I think that one of the things that really served me well is I would continue asking why. Why is this guy growing and I can't? Because I'm blaming the economy. Why is that? Why am I killing myself? I'm traveling like, you know, like massive, uh, like, you know, miles every single week. And yet this guy's doing less than half of that. And he seems to be growing. Like, well, what's going on there? Why am I starting a business? And, and six months into it, I'm barely scraping by. When And, and as I started looking at that, that was the big identifier when I realized I'm trying to do it all from up here. And there's a purpose to our logical mind to help us solve complex problems. But we start using it to try to strategize and run our entire life when there is so much more powerful, like so much more power available to us when we can get into alignment, use our mind the right way, but then be open to that flow of things opening up. That was the biggest shift I made from doing certain things to doing things a certain way. Nice. So give me an example of a powerful question that somebody can ask themselves to get themselves out of their head and into, into their emotions of what they want. Yeah. One of the things is like, I have my uh, high priorities, but I don't live by those to-do lists anymore. I don't look. So if I notice I'm thinking I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this, you know, those massive actions like that, I'll just stop. Uh, and I'll just say, what, what's the next most important thing I do? When we get into that mode of doing, excuse me, when we get into the mode of doing that, we start opening up to outer insights. Like I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, the largest single uh, program I've ever been awarded in my life is $25 million program. Nice. That program came about, I had quoted, I'd done all my work, you know, did you know everything I needed to do. And I was driving one day and I, I had learned about this mode and I was in this mode and I was driving and all of a sudden, out of, just out of nowhere, I thought about the person. And, I, and this has happened to me multiple times where things like this happened. And I, I picked up the phone and I called him and I go, hey, Eric, this is Joe, da, 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 da. He goes, oh my God, I forgot all about that. I had your quote. 
He goes, let me look into, I got the sources this week. Let me look into, and I ended up getting awarded that program. If I had not have made that call at that moment, he didn't even remember he had a quote from me. Yeah. I've had that happen over and over. I have my clients have that happen where it, it's, it's like, you can't explain how it came to be, but it does over and over and over again. And when I started hitting on that, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it was like, you know what? I'm not going to spend so much time running my mind and running my feet is I'm going to be just staying into that alignment place, staying into that place where it's like, okay, like listening for direction rather than creating direction from here. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It does. I know when I was working with sales teams, it was can, <laughs> overcoming the idea that they had to follow up with somebody in three days. Otherwise the lead was gone. And I'm like, no, if their head, if their name pops into your head for a reason, phone them, call them, email, like get exactly. in touch with them. It happened for a reason. They don't care. I don't care if it's three days later. Why? Where did that formula come from? And why do we? <laughs> I, I have walked into leading sales teams <laughs> when I found out their process and, and they literally, Michelle, they literally had a process that we send this information, we call and follow up twice, and then we move on. And it's like, oh my God, do you know how much you're leaving on the table? Right? <laughs> And one of the things I do with every business owner that I work with, because some have, some are their sales team, some mm -hmm. have inside sales, some even have outside sales. And I make them really understand their sales process and maybe even go through it because then they know how to guide their people. So mm -hmm. many people running businesses right now say, I hate sales. So I have somebody do that. And, and they don't even know what's happening with that person. Wow. So that one is of great. The other and areas... <laughs> You were well, like, there's so many things and just drives me crazy. There was a time when I was trying to get oh, a hold of another coach and, uh, and it was like seven calls back and forth. Sorry, I miss you. Call me back. Sorry, I miss you. Call me back. And I'm like, if we're trying to get a hold of each other, <laughs> we can't get a hold of each other. Why do you think that, you know, that you can only call somebody so many times? It's ridiculous. It's, like you, you get a hold of them until the answer is either yes or no. And thank you. Either one is good. Ultimately, you know, you know, the, the worst answer for me to get is a maybe. Right. <laughs> I love yeah. yes. And I love no, because that allows me to then move forward and things like that. Those maybes are just keep you hanging. Wow. Um, and a process to actually consciously stop getting a hold of somebody after two calls for ra no random reason is that's crazy. Half the wow. clients I serve, wow. I would not serve if I followed that. So <laughs> taking those things out of this system, you know, and that, but that's exactly what I mean. So I, uh, one of the other things I've been blessed with is I lead um, leadership trainings. I do so for cities down here in South Carolina, where I live. I do so for the, through the chamber and things like that. And it's amazing how many people lead by how somebody else told them they could lead. But true leadership, our, our, our true potential in what we're doing as a business owner, it's somebody who has this idea, which means they have the highest level of vision for that business they can have. And then they follow other people's leadership styles with it, where it's like, man, your powerhouse of leadership is within you, tapping into that and bringing that forward. And I can give you multiple examples of people who have come to me yeah. because their 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 employees weren't really, you know, hitting their goals and things like that. And they didn't want to bring a coach in to coach them. So they wanted to get coaching and then take it to their people. I found out three weeks into it, this gentleman who was a CEO of a company, he had a 37 year marriage and he and his wife coexisted. And so and, and, and so you asked me, what does that have to do with his 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 team? Within a month, he did a live testimonial for me and he brought that up on stage in front of, you know, a bunch of people. And he said, yeah, when I met Joseph, you know, I, I, when he brought that up about your marriage, your kids, I, I didn't know how it fit in. But now uh, six months, not even six, well, less than six months later, that guy's organization has picked up beyond what they've ever experienced. And do you know, he never took any of that coaching to his team. But what he did do, Michelle, is he transformed within himself within within five weeks when he did the testimony? He said him and his wife were like newlyweds again, you know, and right. snuggling up on the couch, eating popcorn, watching movies, all this stuff. But what happens is when we change, our entire world changes on the outside. So somebody who's a CEO of a company, they have that leadership responsibility. And if they're doing it based on a text or what somebody else says, it's not true leadership. 
when that when that gentleman put that piece together and allowed him to strengthen up and to this day he says i i cannot tell you what i did different with my team i didn't coach them he didn't bring me in to coach but all of a sudden he could start seeing things going up and all of a sudden his team was re-inspired and all and that's what happens and that's what i love getting to have that impact in people's businesses and let them experience that firsthand nice i love it well and somebody i mean when we're when i'm listening to you and you say it's an internal process but at the same time, without somebody like you to be there to help facilitate that inner journey, it's not going to happen. <laughs> and and one of or the doesn't other, happen. <laughs> well, and one of the other lessons I learned, yeah, multiple times. I'm not a slow learner, but I'm not super fast either. <laughs> <laughs> is one of the other lessons I learned over time when I first started understanding this concept and 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 coaching and things like that. And, I would look for somebody who's got like 100, 150 people who's really banging it out with a coach. And I'd go, that's the coach for me, you know, and I've paid a lot of invested a lot of money in myself to walk away from there with the understanding. I don't want to be that kind of a coach. So I had that side of it. I don't want to coach with somebody who's going to try to make me a, a mini me of them. I don't want somebody to tell me what they did. And then I try and do the same things because the people that charge, you know, tons of money for coaching and things like that because they're super successful. You know, less than 1% of the people they coach ever achieve the same level of success they do. And that's why all of these things have come together. So it's like, I tell my clients, I have no idea what your pathway is, but what I'm really freaking good at is helping you identify that and then bring that to actions of accelerating, you know, systems of accelerating habits that work for you and start bringing you quick results. And I'll tell you, Michelle, this has allowed me to serve almost a thousand people over the last little over decade. And I offer a hundred percent money back guarantee to any client I work with, because if somebody comes to me and works with me and puts their all in and everything else, if, if I'm not able to get them results, I don't deserve to, you know, get their investment that they put into it for that. I've not once had a client ask me for, and so, so I, and the reason I'm saying that right now isn't a personal pitch. It's anybody who's looking at coaching and stuff, spend a little bit of time and talk to the person that you're thinking might, to see if they're the right person or not and find out, are they helping you find your pathway or are they giving you a pathway? Because if they're giving you a pathway, they're probably not serving you super well. And it's probably not going to work. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just it's, I, I've done it over and over and over. It didn't yeah. for me anyways. Yeah. Well, and, and I know for myself, it was even aspects of what somebody taught at that level. It was like, oh, if I could just learn that thing that they do, that they do so well. It's like, and inevitably, it didn't really work out that well. Um, and to your point, the what, ones that I hired like you that said, hey, it's all about you and how are you going to get yeah. that out? Those are the ones that succeeded. Yes. I have a client that I've, I'm working with in Dell in, <clears throat> in Texas who has, has, has like, you know, gone multi-billion or millions of dollars a year from about a million. And he's done that within, like within, it's, it, it all happened within a six months period, but, and he continues to grow. So it didn't jump up into that, but, you know, but it continued to grow up into that. You know, I have another gentleman I'm working with that does wholesaling right now. He came to me mid-year last year and he said, man, I need help. I'm doing like maybe $34,000, $35,000 a month in, in sales. And I'm living on a line of credit. This is, you know, and so we started working together within the first 90 days of us working together, his business scaled up to $60,000 a month with profit. So now he's I hope. At 60, <laughs> what's that? With profit, I hope. <laughs> well, absolutely. And and so, okay. so, so he was like excited there, you know, and then, and then, you know, it got to be October. So he's going, you know, January, February, March are my worst months, man. If we could do something about that, like the most I've ever done is $23,000 in, in the January, February, March, you know? And so, so we did the exact, we got the same things going with the same tools that I, I take to my clients, but they work differently, you know, in, each unique situation. Yeah. He called me up in, in January. He was over $152,000 in sales. Nice. In February, he got one order a week ago, like last Friday, he got one order where there was over $100,000. He has not added salespeople. He has not increased his advertising. He hasn't brought all kinds of like, like things like that in to help him. He's mm -hmm. working with the same team he had when we met. Nice. And it's all just about him. 
It's Love mindset it. alignment and, and getting that systems of accelerating habits that work for him. It doesn't matter what works for somebody else. He knows what works for him in his business. Nice. And one of the hardest things I have as a, as, a, as a coach that truly, truly in my heart, I want to help people experience this is people are so locked into their conditioning. They'll say things like, well, that's BS. That's not even possible. And you know what I mean? Or, or if you don't work hard, you don't get gains. You know, and, and it's, you know, things like that are what I, what, and it's helping people through those paradigms, but you have to work with them to help them through the paradigms. Right. Well, you and know. I don't think people really understand what a paradigm is and how it affects them so much, so intrinsically. Yes. Yes. And I can explain that really quickly for you Yeah, because <laughs> our paradigms are our, they're simply our habits. They're the mm -hmm. things we do over and over and over. You know, I had a client one time who, and I come up with these, you know, ways of getting people to understand. And so he was saying, man, I don't have any paradigms. I don't have anything like that. You know, I, I don't have to take the same route to work. I don't have to do this. And I go, okay, here's what I want you to do. When you shower tomorrow, I want you to lather 12 times and be done and then rinse. That's why 12 times, count it, one, two, three, four. And then when at 12, stop. It sounds really, really silly. Do you know he called me up the next day and he MF'd me? He said, I can't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't stop there. And that's what happens when we hit up against, I mean, that's a simple thing with, with you know, lathering up our hair with shampoo. But that's how we get when we're running our business too, is we try to get through these things. And all of a sudden that paradigm kicks in and it's like, it won't let us go beyond it. So we can have those breakthroughs into that next level. And the reason that happens, so I developed a system called the SMT method, which is subconscious mindset training. And the way it works is like this. We have a conscious mind. It's what we're focused on, what we read, what we pay attention to, the people we hang out with, all of that, so the thoughts we entertain, all that's in the conscious mind. And then we have a subconscious mind. And all the greats, you know, Bob Proctor, Wallace Waddles, everybody talks about this stuff. But where I feel it's been a little bit shy up until now is the implementation of the SMT method. So we have the, the subconscious and all the subconscious does is just absorbs whatever the conscious mind is focused on. So that shows us the importance of what we choose to focus on, where we're focusing. So, so often we do that unconsciously without realizing it, but to be conscious of the words we're using, the thoughts we're entertaining, all of that, who we're hanging out with, you know, things we're reading, stuff like that, you know, whether we're stuck in CNN, constant negative news and, you know, things like that. Well, within the subconscious mind, there's what I call a motherboard that stores all of our conditioning. In other words, all the stuff that we're focused on is stored in this motherboard. And what happens is the subconscious triggers the brain waves to which actions we take and don't take. That is awesome. So give us an example of a Cinderella story of one of your clients. Yeah, I, I had a, a Regina come to me and she was doing probably six, $7 million in business a year in revenue, you know, in incoming revenue in her business. And she just could not get more. And she was working 60, 70 hours a week. When I met her, she said, Joey, I don't even think I have time to talk to you every week. I'm so busy. And all she was doing, Michelle, was following that downward spiral. She couldn't even find time to turn it around. Within the year that we worked together, implementing the SMT method and, and, you know, the coaching and things like that, her business went from like, let's say it was 8 million to just over $22 million. Nice. And on top of that, I know, isn't that great? On yes. top of that, it was the only year of her adult life that she took five weeks of vacation in the same year. One of them was to a, like a long time bucket list item to Israel for two weeks. Nice. So when I talk about being able to scale and, and still enjoy your life and have balance in your life, like I mean that if I yeah. couldn't do that, I wouldn't be saying that because I get to live like that in my life. You know, I get to go. One of my recent things I just took up as a hobby is hang gliding. So huh? I just got to go up a 2000 foot mountain and I did it because I was afraid of heights. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I'm breaking paradigms. And I went off a 2,000 foot. I actually did seven launches so far of a 2,000 foot mountaintop with me and a hang glider. It's absolutely incredible. And I cannot believe the number of years I missed out on being able to do so because of paradigms, because of that block within me. And that's the same thing with business owners. If you want to scale to that next level and you want to get there quicker, I just want to lean in and say it's possible for you to do so. Nice. I love it. Well, and I don't think people really realize because a lot of business owners will say, I can't, 
you know, double my business because I can't work twice as hard. And it's like, okay, then you're not in business because that's not how business works. (laughs) That's how a job works. It's not how business works. But when it comes to business, it is all about those paradigms. And you know, you have certain paradigms and you know exactly where they are based on the results that you're getting. So if you're, if you're making a hundred thousand a year, you have a hundred thousand dollar a year paradigms. If you are making a million, you have million dollar paradigms. Like it's, it's as obvious as that. (laughs) The gentleman I worked with in Dallas, I mentioned, yeah, his business grew so quickly, Michelle, that we had to quickly start assembling and, and adding to his team to cover it all and everything. And when I first talked to him, he said, then I got more people to manage and I got this and I got that. And it's like, not if you put the right things in place, you won't, you know? And right. so, so and what a good problem to have is that you have to increase your team to handle the growth <laughs> that you're experiencing. Exactly. But our paradigms are tell us that's hard. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to go through that aggravation and I don't want to, you know, things like that. But that that is exactly what you said. Then your paradigm is where you're at right now. And just, you know, you can accept that. If you don't want to accept it, you got to be willing to do a little something different with your thinking. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think people look at their teams too, especially, and go, oh, it's the team that's dysfunctional. And it's like, and back to your original story, <laughs> it wasn't about the team that changed. It was about the owner that changed. And suddenly the team is has changed. And it, I, I would... Bet nickels to dimes that if we got a chance to interview him, that he would say it was like he had a different team, that it was as if he had fired everybody and hired all new people because he changed his ways. And if if your organization is more than two years old, you have paradigms within your organization. There's set paradigms within there that are being played out day over. People may not recognize them. People may not notice them, but they're playing over and over. And one of the common themes I learned in organizations in bankruptcy is as you're getting into that position, all focus, all concentration becomes around the problems. And and one of the things I love doing is helping business owners, organizations, to, to, to use their successes as their squeaky wheel, not their problems. You know, squeaky wheel gets the grease. Mm-hmm. Look at the successes being that way and how to do that. Well, absolutely. And I, I think people have a real issue focusing on the successes, especially while they're going through things, thinking that it's signs of delusion. And, and to me, it's you got to this place because you've been focused on the negative and it's gone down <laughs> where yes. your attention is gone is quite obvious. And now yes. we need to address your attention in the growth phase. And as I say to accountants all the time, I love them. And we can't always focus on expenses because if we're always focused on expenses, it means we're not making anything. <laughs> yes, exactly. And the yes. On the- and right along with that, one of the things I like, I hear a lot is, well, that's not even realistic. Do you want realistic results or do you want unrealistic results? Do you want breakthroughs? Do you want like, like, but we're conditioned that that's not realistic, you know? And so we stick to that. And if it doesn't fit into the box of that, then, then, then we, we, we won't hear of it. But realistically, when you talk to somebody, when I get in a conversation and people really start talking about how their vision of their company and what they want to see happen, it is unrealistic. But then oh, yeah. we take realistic actions to keep it small. That's another paradigm. (laughs) Yep, absolutely it is. Awesome. So what what are some stumbling blocks that somebody might be having that's listening to you right now and going, oh my God, Joy, I need you so badly in my life. What are they going through? Well, that person would be open. One of the things, the first thing that I run into that I tell people is, is, is an open mind. Without an open mind, you can't do anything different. You know, so that's the very first thing. If you're somebody that's listening to this and going, wow, I, I, there may be benefit here and stuff. It, the next thing to it is is honestly, like even, you know, billion dollar organizations, it's fear. It's the fear of like, you know, what, what if I did this? It's a fear of like past coaching programs or something like that, where they've tried something that didn't work. And so they're just locked into that. Or somebody even somebody told them they did something and it didn't work. And I'll tell you, I spent a lot of money <laughs> things that didn't work to find out what does work. And that's the reason why, like I set things up. I talk to people a couple of times because I'm checking them out too. I'm finding out, do they fit for me? Is this somebody I could be successful with? Because if it's not, I don't want to waste their time and my time and they're doing the same thing. So I set some calls up so we can get comfortable. We can get to know each other. We can talk about these details and things like that. And then from there, we really like, you know, the name of my organization is IFGT. 
and it stands for it's freaking go time. And I did that intentionally because that's how I operate in, you know, my life and my clients lives. So from there, it's, it's like we just start rolling forward and start experiencing the transformation, the change and the results showing up. Thanks. I love it. So I know our listeners are going to want more from you. How do they start their journey with you? The easiest way you can go website, things like that. I'm sure you put the link. The easiest way is just go to coachwithjoey.com. Schedule a 10 minute call. We'll get on the phone, 10 minutes of your time, 10 minutes of my time. I'm willing to lean into this. There's no charge or anything. And we'll talk a little bit and understand what's going on. I'll get you some tools right in that call that you can walk away. And if you choose to, you can start using to start experiencing some changes and shifts. If we align, if it fits for you and it fits for me, because again, you know, when I start, you know, with guaranteeing money back, guaranteeing results, I, I, I'm, I only work with 10 clients at a time and I am somewhat specific on the people I work with because I want to make sure it's people who really want to bring that. And so if that works out, then I offer them a, a free coaching session where we get on the phone, no obligation, no, and, and we go through the process and we go through what's entitled and what is required by them, what's required by me and, and, and lay it out that way. So it's easy progression into it. It's not like you're calling and I'm getting, trying to get your credit card over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love it. So what was that link again? It was coachjoey.com? Coach, coach with joey.com. Nice. Love it. So I get to ask you at this, at what point in life did you know that you were especially kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Um, I think, I think when I was in my early twenties, I had a thought, but I didn't believe it was possible. Mm-hmm. I think as I was going into corporate and building sales stories before I took over in management and executive positions and things like that, at some point it was like, hmm, I could do this. My first business was, I was 30, I think 31 years old and I started a construction company and I would subcontract everything. And then I had a loaning, a, a lending company that I created along with it. So they could buy the notes and, and carry the notes on the, on the jobs that we did and stuff. And it worked out pretty good for a while. But again, that exhaustive effort, I was working full time, I was going to school, I was a builder, so I was building a house and I I, I took over this company and it was almost nothing and I started building it up. And then Michelle, the way I lived them, because I thought I had to work my way into success. And I was like, you know, I could probably go get my pilot's license in my spare time. And I did. So at some point, (laughs) when things started crashing, I was like, okay, I'm selling this. Huh. And I, you know, you know, sold that off and stuff. But yeah, it, it started at 22, 23 years old, but I didn't think it was really something possible until my 30s. I love and it. And then even then I knew it was possible, but I had no idea how. And one of the things that corporate gave me was that understanding because as I was doing coaching, I could practice it in there and see what worked and see what didn't and keep studying to understand that, you know, to get to that point of understanding the subconscious mind. And because the subconscious mind ultimately will determine how far we go in life. Yes, it does. So. Love it. I love it. You have been absolutely awesome. Any last words for our peeps? No, I, I, again, if, if whatever level you're at at your business, you know, be like, I always start with gratitude, be grateful for where you are, but mm-hmm. understand that drive within you. That's, that's supposed to be there. The fear, the things that come up, the paradigms, the blocks, they're not. It's just a byproduct of being a human being. And you can work on those and shift those and open up the heights of what you go. The bad news, nobody can do it for you. So. So true. So true. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I know how valuable it is. Absolutely. I really enjoyed this, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedelec. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your friends. We love helping entrepreneurs grow. Thank you for listening to 7 to 8. If you're interested in upping your speaking game, be sure to connect with our guests with the links in the show notes and connect with me to see how we can help you get your tech done for you and help your speaking dreams come true.